Hey guys, this is Tara with Kittens Weights and Tarot and today uh, by request I am making a video on my mediumship skills like how I became a medium like <laughs> what all that entailed. I never took any courses really on like how to become a medium or you know anything like that so I'm just gonna kind of like roll back the, the timeline and kind of tell you like how everything started and kind of how I've um, just personally on my journey learned to finesse things and figure things out myself so I just kind of had to yeah I had to kind of just figure this whole journey out kind of on my own uh, it really helped later on when YouTube came out and I could you know find people on the web that you know maybe um, were having similar experiences to myself and so that was like really um, helpful. I would read a lot of things, uh, you know, books and blog posts um, and <laughs> I used to like to watch, uh, well I still do, uh, The Long Island Medium and you know things like that and um, just to I don't know, kind of kind of help me with my own uh, journey with spirit. So if we roll back the clock, we have to go back to when I was a child. So like living in La Mesa. So this is before my brother was even born. Uh, my brother was born when I was six years old. So this like before that, um, I don't know. I used to, um, in my bedroom, I would always feel like there was somebody in there watching me and sometimes I would get kind of creeped out. And I was appreciative when my mother got these like giant vinyl stickers um, and she had put a big sun and a big like rainbow and cloud on my closets and I felt that that really helped to um, make my bedroom a lot more happy. Uh, I would, um, there were certain toys of mine that I felt were a little, like low vibe or creepy and I didn't even know the wording for it because I was like you know like four and five years old uh, so I would like stick those in my closet and I would just take out like the happiest of my stuffed animals and I tried to make my bedroom as happy and inviting as possible I was happy when my mother had put plants in my room and it seemed like uh, that weird feeling I had like I just felt like somebody was in my room watching me. Sometimes they felt creepy. Sometimes it felt like somebody I knew, but I couldn't quite, you know, put my finger on it. And my parents and teachers, you know, back when I started kindergarten and everything, said that I just had a really overactive imagination and that I was always kind of like talking to myself and talking to people that weren't there. Um, and so I always just assumed that, wow, I'm like making up these conversations with people in my head and that I was just making up people and I was making up what they look like and everything. And since I was quite the little artist, I like drawing pictures of these people. Um, and so, you know, it was to me, um, maybe not so scary because I thought that I was I was making stuff up like, oh, I'm just making up people that I see everywhere. Like that's just all in my head. Although there were some times where I'd be someplace or I'd be alone and I would get the creeps like there was somebody near me and I didn't like it. And so I would, um, you know, right away just be like, you know, I'd grab my stuffies, which I obviously I love my stuffies now <laughs> but my stuffies were always like my my stuffed animals were like my protectors I would like put them up and like please like make them go away and I didn't know who them was or it was but I knew in my heart of hearts that there was someone or something there um and it wasn't just my imagination even though I told myself that it was because that's what everybody said it was um start flashing forward to um let's see maybe when I get to middle school and I would, um, and I had kind of started brushing off like ghosts and spirits as just like fun ways to scare yourself. Like maybe they're not real because my, my, my parents would say they're not real. My mother would say that, you know, there's only angels and, and that's it. When you die, you go to heaven or you go to hell and, you know, <laughs> and that's it. There's only angels. And so I was like, okay, but I didn't quite believe all of that. Um, and my dad just didn't believe any of it. He was just like, that's nonsense. If people say they see ghosts, it's because they're nuts. Um, and I remember that, uh, we had moved and you know by this time my brother's already born and um, you know and a little bit older and 
I was always creeped out by the upstairs in my house. Um, I felt like there was always somebody in one particular room looking over my shoulder and something really didn't want me in there. And so I'd be really creeped out. Um, and I would leave and I'd even talk out loud like, hey, I'm just sewing something or hey, I'm just crafting something, like making something right now, like please leave me alone. Um, and I would try to tell my mom that I thought something was up there and she didn't really believe me. Uh, my little brother would claim to see see things though my brother would say he would see uh, a very um, demonic looking man that lived in the, the hallway um, and he would claim to see um, the same person go into the room that creeps me out that was always freaking cold and this is upstairs so the heat rises except for in that room it was always icy um, like really cold like sometimes you could see your breath <laughs> like sixth sense kind of thing, you know? Um, and sorry, while Wally's with me right now. Everybody see? Hey, too, Wally, Wally, too. <laughs> um, and uh, my brother would say that sometimes there was something that would chase him up there. And I believed my brother, but I didn't want to look like I was you know, because my brother would get teased by my dad, especially like, oh, you're just making it up. Oh, it's Felix the ghost, you know. And so I didn't want to be like made fun of, too. So I'd also kind of like tell my brother, oh, that stuff's not real, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> um, although there were a couple of instances where he was really disturbed by what he was seeing. And I could feel and I knew for sure that what my brother was seeing is, was real. What I couldn't see, I could only feel, but he would physically see it with his eyes. Um, like not his third eye, like he would see it with his eyeballs. <laughs> and it was just totally freaking him out as a kid. And so one day I just like tried to stand up to these things that were scaring him. And I was like, hey, like you leave my brother alone. Like you want to mess with somebody? Like you mess with me. Like you do not mess with this little boy. Like this is my little brother, you know? <laughs> Cause I was really protective of him. Um, um, and me, I'm like scared as shit. So, <laughs> but I'm like trying to act tough, you know? Um, and so I um, was always kind of on this border of like, I, I kind of believe the stuff that I'm, I'm feeling kind of not. Uh, then my mother at a certain point, um, like wanted to all of a sudden throw Catholicism on us and like we had to go to catechism and all this stuff and you know I would try confiding in like my CCD teacher and my um you know we would have like youth group and stuff and I would try to tell them like that my house was like kind of haunted and kind of creepy and people would be like oh no no like that's that's either just like demons or the devil you know messing with you or it's angels and I'm just like I don't think everything is the devil you know <laughs> So, um, so yeah, I was still kind of like in that limbo of like, you know, I kind of know stuff's there, but I'm kind of trying to shut it down because it really scares me. Um, and for real though, my house was really haunted. <laughs> like it was really haunted. Um, and I had friends of mine that were, um, uh, my, my Mexican friends and they were a lot more open about spirits and things like that because they, they, um, well, at least from my friends, like they, their families were open about it. Like they were Catholic too. They believed in Jesus and the devil and everything, but they also believed that there were spirits and that loved ones could come back or like sometimes maybe spirits were lost and they roamed the earth and, you know, but they really were just trying to get to the other side. So, um, yeah, so I, it, it was helpful to have friends like that, especially when they visited my house and they would tell me, dude, your upstairs has got some crazy shit happening up there. And I was like, really? I was like, like, dude, I, I have always felt like something was up there. And so for, for at least, you know, a couple of my friends, it was helpful to have that reaffirming that I'm not crazy. I'm not making it up. And like, maybe my parents aren't totally 100% right about knowing everything. Um, so it just kind of like stayed like that where it was like, I kind of feel like there's some stuff, but I'm not really voicing it to people at this point, other than maybe a couple of my friends that I can trust. Um, and they would like, like confirm like, oh, I'm feeling this. I'm like, great, yeah, I'm feeling that too. So that was like kind of cool. Um, although I was like really scared. Um, when I went off to college, however, um, I had been so creeped out in the house that I was living in because I figured it was like so freaking haunted. <laughs> like there was like almost poltergeist stuff happening in that house. That house was very unsettled. Um, my, I, I think that the um, 
stuff that was going on like with my family wasn't helping the energy of the house you know my my parents were not getting along so there was a lot of like this discord uh, there was a lot of discord between me and both my parents um, there was a lot of uh, you know there was uh, abuse going on in the house and there was all this other stuff so definitely not helping the energy of the house you know my depression and things like that and my brother just being like scared out of his mind because he's like seeing physically like everything that's going on <laughs> and on, on another plane but happening also at the same time on this plane and um, so my brother and I started kind of confiding in each other at a certain point where I decided you know it was kind of like shitty to make fun of my little brother um, and I was like okay you know I feel stuff and he was like well I see stuff so <laughs> so then we would um, try to help each other and so um, before I left for college um, you know, so while I was like in high school, like junior, senior year, um, if my brother was too scared to sleep, uh, he would call me into his room to kind of like just stay with him until he uh, fell asleep. Sometimes I'd get creeped out and I'd call him and he would come over into my room. <laughs> but um, yeah, and our rooms like faced each other. But uh, he was literally so scared. He, he had Christmas lights that he would lay around his bed and he would have them plugged in just so he could have lights on all the time. He had a bazillion night lights he had uh, he slept with a baseball bat and a, like a basketball a football a bunch of baseballs um, so that he had like stuff to throw at the things he would see when he'd wake up in the middle of the night like he'd be really scared and then all of a sudden you'd see like all his balls his sports equipment <laughs> like by the like the doorway because he'd see stuff come into his room and he'd like just like chuck stuff because he'd be so scared and then he'd like go under his covers and me too i'd go under my covers i was like leave me alone i know there's stuff in my room so i was i was really um traumatized not only was there as a like traumatic family life going on but there was also like creepy stuff going on in my house so i think that you know, having the those low vibes like within the family going on, that was kind of inviting low vibe stuff. You know, like like a, like like attracts like kind of thing. Um, when I went off to college, for me, it was the most peaceful thing that ever happened because once I was in the dorms, all the noises I heard were from people that were alive, like all the screaming, the music, the people horsing around. I was like, oh yes, peaceful night sleep. So I slept so well when I was in the dorms in college. Um, but I, what was nice was because I, I got to get out of my city. I got to get away from like my family and my friends and I got to make new friends and meet new people. And um, especially like my second year and my second, third and fourth year, I lived in an international dorm. So I met people like from all countries, um, all these different backgrounds. And it was just such a, like a mind expanding thing. I could, um, you know, talk to people about like my weird haunted house and like people from other countries. Like I had friends that were like from the UK and Argentina and Australia and parts of Africa. And like, they were like, oh yeah. So like they would tell me like, like it was no big deal. Like, oh yeah, like we see spirits too and we feel stuff too. And you know, and, um, and some people's cultures, like that was just like, it's a part of their culture. And so then it became more of like, oh wow, I can kind of open up about this stuff. But as I opened, I started getting a little bit more nervous because I started feeling more stuff that I had kind of shut down when I was in my like haunted house. So I was like, whoa, 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 I'm not ready for this shit. <laughs> so I, I shut it down, sort of. I mean, I still kind of felt stuff, but I ignored it and I would see things in my mind, but I was like, oh, it's just my imagination again. You know, I didn't really trust it. Um, so then, let's see, uh, stuff was kind of like that. Um, until, um, I don't know, like when my, I, I would say the, like a, when I was in grad school. Yeah, when I was in grad school, the guy I was dating, um, I started like opening up even more. Like I tried to connect to maybe the things that I'm seeing. I was like kind of testing the waters and then I'd get a little scared and I'd like go back and then I like kind of like, you know, see stuff, but I wasn't um, telling people other than like my boyfriend at the time that I saw things because I didn't really want to get made fun of because of the group of friends that he hung out with. And then we moved to my current boyfriend who like we've been like boyfriend, girlfriend forever. Um, and he, um, 
you know, was like pretty cool with like whatever I did because we'd been friends like for like six years before we started dating. So he kind of knew that I was like into the woo woo and that I was like into spirits and things like that. Um, and so that's when I had brought out my tarot cards again and I started working with tarot. And it was actually when I started trying to work with tarot again that my ability to sense spirit started coming back at the same time. And I was like kind of in this, I don't know, I don't know if I'm ready for this. And so I eventually took my very first tarot deck and I had gifted it because it creeped me out for some reason. I ended up getting the Osho Zen tarot. And then with that, um, I felt more comfortable opening up and as I did it felt like the energy was different uh, that I was feeling and sensing of spirit um, and I would just trust it in my heart that I was actually feeling and sensing spirit but I still hadn't voiced it to anyone yet other than my boyfriend um, and then this is where <laughs> this is where like I would say the biggest um, I don't know uh, breakthrough in like my mediumship skills because it's it, it was kind of more like I think I sense things I think I feel things you know I think this is what I'm seeing you know but I wasn't like wouldn't call myself a medium I would just say that there was like creepy stuff <laughs> um, but everything changed when we moved into the house that I'm in now so when we moved into this house, there was definitely a lot of activity that was happening here. Um, you know, windows opening and closing by themselves, us getting, well, my boyfriend getting locked out of the house where it would be impossible to lock the door before shutting it kind of instances with certain uh, like sliding doors in our house. And things were like, <laughs> like really active um, where things were, yeah, just, moving, things were misplacing, things were locking us out. Uh, we'd start seeing things out of the corner of our eyes. And I say we, as in both my boyfriend and I, and my boyfriend is Mr. Like, I only believe what I can, you know, scientifically prove, you know, he's Mr. I am on the, you know, level plane, Mr. Straight Lace, you know, and I'm like Miss Head in the Clouds. So, you know, I'm like Miss Woo Woo and he's like, yeah, right, right, right. Until like stuff started happening to him and like stuff he couldn't explain. Um, and I had a couple of people over to do uh, clearings of my home as like a housewarming gift when we first moved in. And both of them, they don't even know each other, um, didn't even have a chance to talk to each other. Both of them said that there was a portal in the master closet upstairs and that there was a small one up at the top of the stairs. And um, that was kind of like the source of all the energy. And there were some things that came through that maybe shouldn't be on this plane. And so they kind of like helped to work to take them away. And it was awesome because that was the first time I really saw both of those friends of mine be so open about like their woo-woo-ness and what they could sense and feel and see and what they could do. And it was like, no big deal. Like that's just what people do. And so that really helped me like, oh wow, there's like people that could just do this and it's like, okay, you know, they can sense these things. And so, um, so yeah, I mean, our, our house has since settled down um, and the only spirit that we hear in here now is our old cat, Presley, uh, who could definitely sense spirit. Uh, and Wally always senses Presley's spirit, like both he and I will be able to see Presley walking around, which is kind of cool. Although since we've gotten Loki, um, Presley's spirit hasn't really been here and we think that's because uh, part of Presley is inside of Loki, which is kind of cool. Um, but yeah, this house was like my, my training ground. It's like what definitely like helps me open up about my abilities. And I remember sitting on this very couch with one of my good friends who's Miss Opera Star. Um, and we're chit chatting away. And I could swear that like in my mind, I kept seeing a man off to the side, dressed a certain way, laughing. So I'm like, you know, and she's telling me that she's had some like spirit activity at her house. And she's like, like, you're kind of into that stuff. Like, what do you think? And I was like, do you know somebody who's maybe like died around this time or their birthday was around this time? She's like, oh, my grandfather. And I'm like, and I'm like thinking, starting to think that maybe what I'm seeing in my head is actually like actually, actually real. So I'm like, did he ever wear, and so I'm describing what he's wearing. I describe his hairdo, I describe his glasses, I describe his facial features, and she's like, you're describing my grandfather. Like, I've ne she never talked about her grandfather to me. Like, I don't, I don't know about like the rest of her family. I say that 
at a certain point, it's like I'm looking at a photograph and I see him holding the young girl and I'm describing what I see. And she was like, that is the photo that I was looking at yesterday when I was going through my old photos and I was reminiscing about my grandfather. And I was like, oh my God. And I was like, okay, well he's doing this and he's acting this way. And she's like, oh my God, that's how my grandfather acts. And I was like, oh my God, what I'm seeing is real. Like this has been real this whole time. Like everything I see in my mind has been real. Like it was like this, bah! and this happened, um, I don't know, I, I'd say like maybe five years ago now, um, but it was just like an aha movement that, oh my God, this stuff is all real. Um, so then I started wanting to practice with that particular friend more. I was like, okay, um, give the name of somebody who's passed away, don't describe them, just give me their name and their relationship to you and let's see if I can tap into them. And so at first that was like really hard because I couldn't call in spirit. I would just like see stuff as it popped up and I would try to tell her what I was seeing or I would tell like one of my other closest of friends um, and they'd be kind of like, mm. you know, sometimes they would know what I was seeing and sometimes they were like not. And so then um, I was, you know, doing a little bit more study and I'm like, well, maybe these are spirit guides. And so, um, then I started changing, like, I don't know the way I, I think about spirit. Cause I always say that like thinking is like calling them. So I'd be like, okay, I don't want to see like spirit guides or something else. Like I want to see this person's uncle, let's say, um, please show me this uncle, please. And I'm like asking my guides, please bring forward this uncle. And I would just like try to hone onto this person's energy. Um, and I, I actually, I don't even know how I started doing that. Like I just started like feeling within my body, like my energy changing. And then it's like, okay, so I'm tapping somebody else's energy now. So then I'd be like, okay. And I was still kind of like, Ooh, I don't know, like, you know, I, unsure of myself. So then I'd tell her like, okay, you know, this is what I'm seeing now. She'd be like, yes. And so that's when, and this was now like a few years ago. That's when things changed because I'd practiced every day. I'd practice like with her. I'd practice with people online and I would like do stuff for free. And I was just like, let me practice, you know, and if I'm wrong, it's okay. Cause it was just a free reading, you know? <laughs> and so it was like a really low pressure stuff. And so I practiced with as many people as I could. And you know, what? I, I've had a few people give me like, kind of like, I don't really believe in that stuff. But I think because I come at it from such a like a, a positive point of view, like not trying to creep people out. And I'm like, oh, that's totally cool. If you don't believe in that, that's cool. This is just like kind of what I'm into and I'm kind of a weird person and people are more accepting of that, I think. And it could also be the area that I'm in. Like San Diego is a pretty chill area. California is pretty chill. Um, I can't say that I would be maybe as comfortable if I grew up somewhere else. I'm, I'm not really sure, but I'm really grateful to be able to you know, hang out and be around the people that I'm with that I'm not like ridiculed for what I do. Um, and actually I'm really grateful that I'm here online and I haven't really been ridiculed. You know, I, I don't know, I, 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 I'm like thankful because I think that would like really hurt me. <laughs> um, but you know, now I'm much more confident in what I do. Um, but it's all because I've just kind of like practiced, practiced, and it's always changing like how I see and sense spirit. So I've gotten really good at like calling in spirit, but a lot of times now, like I, 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 not all spirits I have learned communicate the same. Some it's like exactly how they look in human form and they will like, I can hear them talking to me. Some of them it's like all metaphor, 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 like pictures. Um, some people it's like feelings. I'm feeling this, I'm feeling this, you know. Um, so I've learned that there's no one way for spirit to come through. Um, I'm still definitely always like honing and, and like moving along with my skills, but that's kind of like been my journey. It's just been one like just practicing. And once I felt comfortable and I was getting confirmation that people were like, yes, what are you, what you are seeing is real. Like you are saying things that you wouldn't, you shouldn't know, you know, about this person or, you know, whatever. So I think that's pretty cool. And so it was like a big deal when I started making that an offering on my Etsy shop to do mediumship readings. Cause I was like, what if I'm wrong? You know, but I kept hearing from spirit that it's like, it's okay. Just like go for it and it'll be okay. And yeah. And all my mediumship readings have been pretty cool. I mean, um, if people didn't understand them at first, you know, later on down the line, they'd 
they'd understand what the reading was about. And so, yeah, so that's, that's just my journey. You know, I just kind of just had to figure it out on my own. I hung out with other people that, um, you know, could feel, sense, hear, see, spirit, just no spirit is there. Um, and I just had conversations with them. I just like asked them lots of questions like, how do you do this? How do you know when spirit is there? And I've tried out uh, different ways of, of sensing spirit. And I still use different um, like tools. Like sometimes I'll use tarot cards to talk to spirit, even though sometimes I could hear them too. It'll be like, I'm feeling and hearing and seeing and using the cards and getting messages. So it's like coming to me in multiple ways. It's not just, I just hear a spirit talking. Like it's, it's coming to me in so many ways. And for me, the information comes quick. So when I feel like I need to tell somebody something, I like really can't keep my mouth shut and I interrupt people. I'm like, and, and, and I only do it for like people that I know will be, um, accepting of like me doing this. I don't just like try to scare people be like you over there. Yes, I have a, a message from spirit. Like I totally don't do that. Like this is with friends who know me and know that I just do that stuff. So I feel more comfortable being like, I need to blurt this out now, you know, and they understand. So anyway, um, I would be more than happy to continue this conversation with uh, any of you who are looking into doing mediumship or maybe you're a little nervous about, um, you know, tapping into some abilities that you have, or maybe you are like a pro and you want to like, just tell me your story, uh, put that in the comment section below or email me at Tara kittensweights and Uh, you can also find me on Instagram at kittens weights and tarot um and you can message me there and you can message me on facebook my facebook is kittens weights and tarot um yeah and i'm just like really interested to hear your guys' stories like to me this is all very fascinating i am by no means an expert or like a you know like the guru at the top of the mountain i'm just like you know on this journey it's been a wonderful journey i'm absolutely like grateful to be able to do what I do and that I was able to allow myself to be open to it eventually. <laughs> and yeah, it's been, it's been an awesome journey. And that's not to say that, you know, everything that comes through is all light being, light beings and rainbows and unicorns. I mean, sometimes it's unicorns and light beings, but sometimes stuff that comes through is like low vibe, but I know now how to, um, like, clear my space with my own energy. And that I've had to learn how to do just through just like practicing. Like what if I do a Tibetan singing bowl? What if I use sage? What if I scream out loud? Hey, get out of my house. What if I sing opera and see if that like <laughs> clears my home? So yeah, I mean, I, I've just tried all different kinds of stuff. And so for me, what I know what works best if uh, things are creeping me out is I just imagine like a light explosion. Uh, I call in my closest of spirit guide homies. What up, Wally? <laughs> I call in Wally. <laughs> um, and I sometimes will sing out loud. Sometimes that works. Sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes the Tibetan bowl works. So I, I don't think that there's any one way to do anything. I think it's always different depending on the energy that's there. So Definitely, if you guys want to continue this conversation, I'd be more than happy to do so. And yeah, that's it for me. I just thought I would, um, there was a couple of people that were curious about this, so I thought I'd make a video. So I will catch you spiritual homies later. If you dug this video and you want me to do more of like my journey type stuff, or you want me to go into more detail about mediumship, because I didn't want this to be a super long video, uh, then give me a thumbs up, comment down below, and uh, don't forget to click subscribe. Don't forget to click the notification bell and yeah, I will catch you all later. Oh, and if you want to catch a reading with me, uh, go to www.kittensweightsandtarot.com. I have my mediumship readings on there as well as a bunch of other types of readings. But anyway, I'll catch you spiritual homies later. Peace, love, and chicken goose. Peace out.